Hey YouTube, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video for you. Today we've got a pretty special knife on the table. This is the Spyderco Sage 4. And the reason I say it's special is not because Spyderco Sages are particularly unique or anything. However, this one kind of is unique. One, I would say this is the dressiest, sort of the classiest of all the Sage knives. It's also the hardest to come by. It's discontinued and very popular. And that's always a winning combination for a knife, although not a winning combination for you as viewers, because that means if you want one, it's going to be tough to get your hands on one uh, if you didn't get your hands on this one. Now, I want to say a couple more things about the Sage Knives before we get into our discussion of this particular one. Let me say though that overall I find this to be a very impressive knife and I am super lucky to be able to check it out because of how rare it is and how nicely it's done. Okay, Now let me get into a little bit of discussion about the Sage Knives. As you know there are five of them. They are all with different locking mechanisms and they're, they're named Sage because those locking mechanisms sort of pay homage to whoever invented that lock, whether it be Chris Reeve or in this case, Almar or whoever else. Okay, so that's a little background on the Sage series. Let's go ahead and get into my discussion of this knife in particular. Oh, and let me just say, I will, when we get to the comparison portion of this video, include a comparison to the Para 2 and the Manix, because, Manix 2, because uh, this is the most requested knife I've had on the channel. Okay, so what I mean by that is, you guys have been sending me messages for years saying, Kevin, why why don't you have a Sage review? When are you going to review one? Can you compare the Sage to the Manix? Can you compare the Sage to the Para 2, to the Domino, to whatever else? And, and so you guys have sent me a lot of messages about this knife. So now I finally have one and I'm able to share my thoughts with you guys, okay? As you probably know, if you've been following the channel, this knife is a little too small for me. So I wouldn't actually want to own this knife. That that doesn't mean I can't appreciate it, and I certainly do. And there's a lot of things I really, really like about this particular knife, just not the overall size, which happens to be seven and one eighth inches overall, three inches there on the blade, four and three sixteenths on the handle. Okay, so just under four and a quarter inches. The grip area here, which you guys really like me to talk about, is three and a half inches. Okay, and that does not include the choil. So the possibility to choke up there is not included in that measurement, but man, is it ever nice. I really do like finger choils on knives, especially small knives. Finally, this the weight on this knife. Now, all those other numbers are gonna be the same across the spectrum of the different Sage knives that are out there. However, the big change is going to be the weight. This one is pretty hefty at 4.2 ounces. Now, some of them weigh in at under three ounces, okay? so. That's a pretty significant jump, but that's just because of the construction and the materials used here. We've got desert ironwood and titanium bolsters over stainless steel liner lock, full stainless steel backspacer, or I mean, back mid back lock is what I should have said there. And so you can just see as you kind of look at this, there is a lot of metal here, a lot of material, which is why it weighs as much as it does. Now, in terms of how it carries and goes in and out of pocket, First, I want to say I didn't carry this as much as I do some knives because they're so hard to get. So this is not a knife I could really afford to break or lose because you may literally not be able to replace it. Like there's just none out there. So uh, I took it a little easy with this guy and did baby it a little bit, but I have used it. I have carried it and I will say it carries very, very well. Let's go ahead and talk about this blade. The blade is probably the least special thing about this knife because it's a sage blade. They're all pretty well the same. You're getting the leaf shaped full flat ground Spyderco blade. Yes, it's nice and thin behind the edge. Yes, it slices really, really well. It is S30V, which Spyderco does a fantastic, fantastic job on. And it does have the typical Spyderco ergonomics, which is with that half choil at the front and a nice thumb ramp back here, along with a spider hole. So all of those things I think we're fairly familiar with. So let's not spend a lot of time on the blade, but let's go ahead and talk a little about lock and deployment and then the handle where of course this knife kind of really shines. All right, so lock and deployment, as we mentioned, there are a number of versions of this knife with different locks. And this of course is the back lock version, the mid back lock version, which is paying homage to Almar. Now, in terms of the performance on that lock, it is very, very smooth. Little shake and it drops shut. Now this is not a knife I'm able to spider flick or I can probably thumb flick it if I give it a little bit of wrist, but I'm not gonna be able to do it 
on camera. However, I don't feel like this is a knife that's really meant for that kind of, you know, I don't see uh, this knife being the knife that you sit on the couch and, and flick or play with. I don't see it being like a tactical knife or anything like that where, you know, deployment speed is of utmost importance. It's just a nice classy gentleman's folder that you're going to get out and you're going to nice and slowly open up to do some cutting task that you've got. I wouldn't also, you know, although this is very well built and perhaps even overbuilt, I would not want to hard use this knife only because of the fact that there's not that many out there and they're highly collectible. Now, if you have one of these knives and you just beat the snot out of it, hey, more power to you. I'm glad that you use a tool that you love. But for me, especially visiting for review or even, you know, if I was going to go out and buy one of these, it would not be the, the knife that I'm going to take to the bush and, and skin an animal with or something like that. All right. So uh, my thoughts on lockup and deployment are this. All of the locks seem to be pretty well executed. They all work pretty well and you've got your preference because the Sage series gives you pretty much any lock you'd want. The one that I, I'm waiting for, you know, this is the Sage series. It'll be interesting to see if they do a Grant and Gavin Hawk lock. Um, don't anticipate that, but it would be neat to see. Uh, now I will say this, when Spyderco wants to do a really refined back lock, they can do a great job and they certainly have here. The fit and finish is really, really nice. The precision, just the cleanness of the, the action, uh, all very, very well done. So, well, you know, it's not fast and it's not sort of tactical. It is very refined and feels really, really great when you're using it. Now let's finally get on to the handle itself. So the construction on this guy is going to be stainless steel liners, desert ironwood scales with titanium bolsters. It is a backlock and look how tightly that backlock is done. You can hardly feel the various layers here. It's just so closely finished and so clean. Really, really, really impressive. Same with the transition between the, the liner and the bolster. It's so close and just so clean that I have to really appreciate the work on this. Finally, it does have a reversible wire pocket clip, which is very popular and what you, which you'll find on all of the Sage knives. So very, very nicely put together. Construction wise, I think this is a great knife. Now, the big thing about this knife for me, okay, is the fact that it feels so good in hand. My biggest complaint about smaller knives is usually that when I hold them, I just don't feel like I've got a substantial tool. I just don't feel confident that I can do whatever I need to do. That is not the case with this knife at all. This knife feels fantastic in hand. And I don't think I would hesitate to say this is the most comfortable small knife that I have ever experienced. It is really, really well done. And, you know, if I somehow was stuck in a place where, you know, uh, a three inch blade was the only thing you were legally allowed to carry, I would almost certainly carry a Spyderco Sage. There are very few other three inch bladed knives that I've found that feel as good as this one does. So the ergonomics here have got to be, to me, the standout feature of this knife. It just feels phenomenal in hand, all right? So that's my overall take on the various features of the knife. Everything on this is extremely well done, and I've never heard too many complaints about the Sage series. That's why they're so popular. Although maybe this one wasn't as popular, which is why it's discontinued and hard to come by these days. Let's now go ahead and get to some comparisons. So first off, Para 2. Uh, for me, this, you know, this knife is one that I would pick over the Sage pretty much any day of the week, largely because of the handle ergonomics. I do like the larger size. Now you're not getting, let me see if I can get these kind of together here. You're not getting a whole lot of extra cutting edge, but it is sufficient for me to say that, yeah, I prefer the, the blade on the Para 2 by a fair margin. Of course, these two, the weight is fairly similar, but generally speaking, the Sage is gonna be the lighter of the two. And let me quickly close it here. Is going to be a little smaller in pocket, although because Spydercos have the hole, they tend to be a little wider. And so there's not that much difference in width, but there is a difference in how deeply it's gonna go into your pocket. All right, the other, I guess, the big thing to consider here would be that some people are really, really big on the wire clip. And I get it, that the wire clip that Spyderco does is really, really nice. Let me move the pair of two out of the way 
and bring in the other knife that I often hear compared to the Sage, and that is, of course, the Manix. Now, you could almost, okay, it's not quite the same, but it, it's... The Manix and the Sage are very, very similar. They both feel fantastic in hand. They both do have that leaf-shaped Spyderco blade. They're gonna offer very, very similar cutting performance. The only difference is going to be you're gonna get a little extra real estate, of course, on the Manix, and you're gonna get that extra cutting edge, which again is gonna be a primary factor for me, but I know for many of you is not a big deal. So, um, but again, um, the Manix has got to be about the only Spyderco that has as many versions as the Sage. You know, you've got this one is the Cutlery Shop exclusive in the G in the orange, um, uh, whatever you call it, fiberglass reinforced nylon FRN. Uh, but there are G10 versions of this. There's the uh, backlock, the mid backlock version of this. There are a number of different steels available in the Manix. So in that sense, it kind of does compare to the Sage in that, you know, there are lots of flavors and you can kind of get to pick your own. For me and for, you know, if I was, if you were calling me up and saying, Kevin, which one of these should I buy? I would certainly be inclined toward the Manix, but I totally, totally understand why some people are going to lean more toward the Sage. Now, let me grab some other comparisons that I, I feel like, you know, if you really like the Sage, you may also be interested in. One has got to be the Kaiser Corto. Very similar on size here, but notice how much more blade you get with the Corto. I really like that. The other thing is, you know, these are fairly easy to come by, which is kind of nice. Uh, let's see, a mini griptilian would be another one, you know, similar blade length there. Obviously the handle is better on the Sage and is gonna give you a lot more real estate, a lot more comfort in hand uh, because of that larger handle. But the blade performance, you know, at, well, actually the blade performance is gonna be better on the Sage as well because of that high flat grind, but the blade length itself is going to be close. Uh, I got some other smaller, here is the Steel Wheel Mini Gecko. Similar um, handle size, but much larger blade. I would say, to me, I prefer the Gecko. If you're looking for something very high end with really tight finishes, really high fit, uh, polish, you know, overall a really high quality blade, these two do compare in that area. Uh, the steel is better on the Sage, but I, I, you know, this feels like a good competitor to me. Uh, let's see. Let's, uh, you know what? This is a popular knife these days. Uh, if you like a small, lightweight knife, I think the North Arm Knife Skaha is a great option. Although, <laughs> these do share one similarity, and that is it's hard to get your hands on them. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm extremely fortunate to have both of these at the same time. Uh, if you look around or if you're willing to wait, you can eventually get a Skaha. Okay, so let's touch on a couple of other comparisons here. I've got uh, the Riot Knives Wave. So Riot Wave here, this is a really gorgeous knife. And I think, again, I feel like if you want something high-end, gentlemen's carry, these are not in the same ballpark in terms of price, but they both kind of have that refined, smaller knife feel. Uh, once again, you're getting a little more cutting edge with the Riot, but there actually is quite a bit of similarity just with the blade grind and stuff like that. Uh, for a budget option, if you want something around this size that isn't going to cost you a whole lot, Kaiser Tangram Santa Fe right there. Uh, these can be had for, I don't know, a very reasonable price unless you're in Canada and then they're not shipping to Canada and I'm sure the CBSA nonsense isn't helping. And finally, let's throw in the Cold Steel Formax. Great big backlock. Uh, I, I don't know, I just like to bring this in and compare it to everything just because it gives me an excuse to carry this knife around. Thanks for watching. I think this is a really, really good knife. Oh, I'm gonna have to edit this. So uh, overall guys, let me give you my thoughts on the Sage in general and the Sage 4 in particular. In general, I think the Sage series is a fantastic series. It's no wonder that these are so popular for Spyderco. They're amazingly comfortable in hand, highly functional blade, and being a little smaller as they are is going to really, really suit some users. To me, it's a little small, but I have to admit they are well-made. And again, the greatest thing I find about this knife is just how well they've done on the ergonomics here. This is a knife that really feels like it's meant to be in your hand, and that's a huge win. So if you're looking for a Sage 4 in particular, great, good luck with that. I don't think you're 
uh, off track. I think it's a great knife to want and to want as a collector or a user. Uh, otherwise, I think the other Sage versions, you know, pick the one that's got the lock that you like the best, and I think it'll serve you well. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll talk to you soon.